It was a very special night on the beach. Anna had just spotted a mama sea turtle who'd come ashore to lay her eggs. The mama made a hole for the eggs to stay in until the babies inside grew big enough to hatch. Anna felt lucky just to see something so special. But she wasn't alone. There were other people on the shore who wanted to take the eggs away and sell them. Anna knew the best place for the eggs was on the beach. So someday the baby turtles could wiggle their bodies right toward the water and join their mama in the ocean. If the people took the eggs, the babies might never hatch. As soon as the mama turtle said goodbye to her eggs, the people tried to dig them up. But Anna got there first. The mama turtle had no idea her eggs were in any danger, so it was up to Anna to protect them. She decided to take them home, away from anyone who might try to dig them up. Anna didn't have a beach in her backyard, but she did have a bucket she could fill with sand. It wasn't as perfect a home for eggs as the sand by the ocean, but here, Anna could stand guard. Every day, she watched the eggs and waited. She wanted to be ready to take the turtles back as soon as the eggs started to crack. Sometimes, she wasn't sure if they ever would. It takes around two months for them to hatch, but these were taking a little bit longer, so we're like, we're not sure if they're gonna make it. All she could do was hope. But two months later, Anna heard a scratching sound outside. And when she went to check on the bucket, one by one, they crawled out of the sand. So many tiny baby turtles, all excited to head back to the ocean. But uh, where was the ocean? Anna had to move fast. Baby sea turtles need to get to the ocean quickly after hatching. She went back to the beach and let the babies out of the bucket. Anna was a little nervous. Did she make it in time? Would the babies know what to do? They were only just born. She watched and waited until the turtles started to crawl. Anna was so happy, but she couldn't leave yet. She wanted to stand guard until every turtle made it to the sea. And right as the last turtle left the beach, she saw something. A big sea turtle was swimming in the waves. There was no way to know for sure, but Anna likes to think that the mama turtle came back just to watch her babies crawl home and to thank Anna for keeping her little ones safe. Which lovable's friend are you about to meet? Let's spin the wheel to find out. It's Spud! Let's hear Spud's story right now. No one wanted to adopt Spud, the tiniest puppy at the shelter. He was worried he'd never find a home. But one day, a family came in looking for just the right pup. And that pup was Spud. Now Spud is everyone's favorite potato in his new forever home and he couldn't be happier. Oh, looks like we got a full house. When Addie bought her new house, Hi. She didn't know it came with a bunch of kitty roommates. These cats thought Addie's house was their house. It's a new kitty cat. But there weren't always a bunch of cats in Addie's yard. It all started with one, Polly. 
taking a nap in my yard right now. Like, I've never been this relaxed in my entire life. When she first spotted Polly, Addie didn't know what was going on. No one told her this home came with a cat. She was like, um, where's your family? Are you sure my house is your home? And Polly was like, yeah, no, I'm yours now. You'll get used to it. Once Addie noticed Polly wasn't going anywhere, she decided, well, maybe it was okay for Polly to live here. It was just one cat, and her yard was a safe place for her to hang out. And it was nice to have Polly around. It was like she already made a new neighborhood friend. But one new cat is one thing. Because one morning, Addie woke up to discover Polly decided to have herself a party. And Polly was like, yeah, let me introduce you to the Pretty Kitty Committee. Obviously, I'm Polly, this is Clint, here's Randy, that's Sandy, Mickey, and of course, that's Goo. Addie couldn't believe it. She now had six cats in her yard. Where did they all come from? But maybe this was just a little get together. These were all of Polly's friends. They'd all leave soon and go on their merry way, so there's nothing to worry about, right? Right? Wrong! Because this wasn't just a quick little party. Addie soon realized these cats weren't going anywhere. And Addie's backyard had become their new home. Hi! Oh, that's your brother, huh? No, it's exactly like you. Just gonna sit here while they eat so that maybe they can get a little bit more used to me. Addie didn't want to make them leave. Clearly, they had nowhere else to go. But she couldn't just invite them in, either. These were outdoor cats. The backyard was their home. So if these cats were gonna live outside, Addie knew what she had to do. She was gonna turn the backyard into a pretty kitty paradise. It was time to give her yard a little TLC. Tender, love, and cat. She gave the cats some fun fence steps and a bunch of toys to play with. Her yard had officially been catified. Oh, I'm glad I put these chairs out. You guys look like you're having a little garden party. But Addie wasn't done just yet. She knew the yard was great, but what if it rained or the cats got chilly? That's when she decided to turn her shed into the ultimate cat shack. What was meant to be Addie's home gym became the coolest kitty clubhouse. We're eating in the shed today because of the rain last night. Oh, they're so cute. Open the doors nice and wide. And the Pretty Kitty Committee fully approved. You never know what you'll get when you move into a new home. Sometimes it comes with a swimming pool or a tree house. Or if you're Addie, a ton of cats. Now, Addie has a bunch of new feline friends. And Polly and the gang not only have a backyard paradise, they finally have a home to call their own. Hi, Maggie. What's the perfect name for this stray dog? Maybe Midnight for his black fur? Or teeny, because he's so small? Actually, he's not that small. He's just usually very far away. Well, when Caitlin first met him, she thought of a very good name right away. Bash, short for bashful, which means shy. Because Bash was very shy. Not even food would get him to come close. And pets, forget about it. Caitlin had started seeing Bash around her farm, always very far away. But even from a distance, she could see he didn't have a collar, which meant he probably didn't have a home. Caitlin knew it wasn't safe for Bash to be out in the wild on his own. But she also knew he wasn't just going to waltz into her house. So she had to come up with a plan to make Bash less bashful. The first plan had been the food but we saw how well that went. So she went to plan two, Gracie. Caitlin's very own pup, who coincidentally looks a lot like Bash. Bash wasn't bashful with Gracie. He actually loved having a friend. 
Maybe his name should have been Tug. Gracie helped Bash trust Caitlin. So much so that she could finally do this. A real pet, which Bash was a little confused by, but he really liked it too. Caitlin was ready for the next step of the plan, a collar, but Bash was not. It took a few weeks of practice until finally, clip. This was a big step. Bash wasn't officially a house dog yet, but he wasn't a stray anymore either. After a nice sudsy bath, Caitlin brought Bash into her house. Bash had lived outside his whole life. How would he feel about being inside for the first time? Turns out, he was a bit of a troublemaker. Bash! She should have named you bad. As in it's bad to break things in the house. And you're stealing shoes now? This is unbash leavable But Bash was just adjusting. He didn't know he wasn't supposed to do those things. After a few days of some naughtiness, he sort of just melted into a real mushy pup who loved his new family. And they loved him right back. Bash could have had a million names, but there was only one thing he ever really wanted. A home. And that's what Caitlin gave him. And Gracie too, of course. Illy Peacock was too little to be on her own. Which is why rescuers weren't surprised when they saw her doing this. They knew it meant she was looking for milk from her mother. Just a few days earlier, the rescuers had found Illy Pika stuck on top of an oyster trestle bed. She was too little to be alone in the wild. They could tell she needed help, so they rushed her to the seal rescue center. Illy Pika was small, and needed a lot of milk so that she could grow big enough to return to the wild. But there was a problem. Her mother wasn't there to feed her. That's when the rescuers came up with an idea. They made a pretend seal mother out of a wetsuit. That way, Illy Pika could feel safe while she drank her milk. And it worked. So well that Illy Pika cuddled up for a little nap. Illy Pika was growing but she still had a long way to go before returning back home. It was time for Illy Pika to start what rescuers call fish school. Step one, pour in the fish. Step two, plop into the tub. Step three, catch a fish with your mouth. It's so funny to watch it. <laughs> Gobbling up all of that fish was making Illy Pika stronger. And as she grew, she started to get braver. Brave enough to defend her tub from the daily cleaning brushes. She was like, go away, tall, spiky monster. You think I don't see you? I see you. Out, foul brush, out, I say. Are you trying to scoop me out? I will live in here forever, you hear me? Forever. The rescuers knew all that bathtub bravery meant it was time for the next step of her journey. Seal school, where she could meet other seals and practice catching fish in open water like she would in the wild. The rescuers wondered, would Illy Pika be ready? She hopped over to the pool, but she seemed nervous to get in. This pool was so much bigger than her bathtub. And there was someone else in it. Illy Pika hadn't met another seal before, but she kind of liked it. She was like, I think I could get used to this. Now Illy Pika spends her days learning how to be a seal from her new friends. As soon as she gets a little bigger, her rescuers know she'll be ready to go back to the wild. But while Illy Pika keeps working, her friends are about to do something amazing. 
Many of them are at the end of their journeys at the rescue center, and their lives in the wild are just beginning. As the other seals head back into the sea, Illy Pika couldn't be happier because she knows soon they'll be able to play together again back home in the wild. We have another baby. When Rachel heard meows coming from underneath a dumpster. I started to hear a kitten cry. It was underneath this bin. She couldn't believe it. What was this kitten doing out here in the junkyard? But the meowing didn't stop. I hear a cat. There wasn't just one kitten who needed a rescue. Another one? There were four. Another one. The kittens were super small. They were only three to four weeks old, and they were lost in a junkyard without their mama. Thankfully, Rachel heard them crying out to be rescued. Oh my gosh, that was the most stressful hour of my life. But she knew her job wasn't done just yet, because now it was time for her to be the best new foster mama to these cute kittens. Rachel brought all four kittens back home where it was safe and warm. These kittens were so young, they still needed help eating. And now that Rachel was their new mama, at least until she could find them homes, it was her job to get these fuzzy babies the food they needed. Aw, look at those happy ear wiggles. But they didn't just need food, they needed names. Rachel had already fallen in love with them at the junkyard and if they were gonna be a part of the family for now, they should feel like family. First up was Briar and Nettle. And then it was Fern and Twiggy, the cutest. The kittens were growing and feeling more active. Rachel couldn't keep them cooped up, so she let them play in the living room. And that's when they discovered they weren't the only animals in the house. The kittens had a big doggy sibling Ginger. You might think a big dog wouldn't want anything to do with a bunch of tiny kittens, but Ginger fell in love with them right away. She was always as close to them as possible. Good girl. Good girl, Ginge. The kittens were a bit confused at first. They were like, what is this mountainous creature? But Ginger was so gentle with them. She even let them crawl all over her. Put that on your back. And eventually, the kittens loved Ginger right back. The kittens were spending so much time with Ginger, which made them wonder, is this our new mama? Because once Ginger entered the picture, Rachel was no longer the only mama to these kittens. That was Ginger's job now. Is that your mom? And Ginger wasn't the only one obsessed with the kittens, because there was another doggy giant in the house, and he wanted some kitty love too. If Ginger was their new mama, then Hoss was their new papa. And these gentle giants made sure to give each kitty all the love in the world. As all four kittens got bigger and bigger, Rachel knew it was time to find them forever homes. Briar and Nettle were quite popular in the neighborhood and were able to find homes nearby. But as for Fern and Twiggy, Rachel knew that they had to stay with her. After all, they were basically Ginger and Hoss's new kitty children. Now, these kittens can relax in their new loving homes. And thanks to Rachel, they'll always have someone looking after them. Several someones. When Amber found this baby deer crying for help, she couldn't believe her eyes. She knew right away something was wrong. Where's your mom? Sometimes mama deer will leave their babies for a little while, but this baby deer seemed lost and hungry. I don't have anything. Amber didn't know what to do. Should she take him with her? What if the mama deer was looking for him? 
Suddenly, the baby deer ran off. Amber thought maybe he'd found his mom. I go back home and I go to bed and I can't stop thinking about him. That night, she went back to check on the baby and saw he still needed help. We couldn't handle it. We came back and found him. Amber knew she had to be this baby deer's rescuer. Okay, now I need some help on what to do. She knew the deer had to eat, but she didn't have any bottles. So she filled a glove with milk, hoping he would like it. And he did! <laughs> Amber decided to name him Scout. It was a good sign that Scout wanted to eat. He was such a brave little deer and wasn't going to give up. Good morning. Oh, you made it. Hang on. Scout couldn't wait to start the day. Amber had watched him all night, and by morning, she already loved him. But she knew she couldn't take care of Scout forever. Wild baby deer need professional help. Luckily, there was an animal shelter nearby. When they got to the shelter, the rescuers couldn't believe how little Scout was. It turns out he was only two days old. If he hadn't asked Amber for help, he'd have been in serious trouble. But now, Scout was trouble-free. With lots of care and love from his rescuers, he grew up and made friends. And one day, when he's old enough, he'll go back to the forest again as a strong, brave, and happy deer. All it took was a little help. Where's your mom? Something was wrong with Munchkin the cat. He was feeling sick and having trouble breathing. He didn't have the energy to play with toys or wrestle with his brother. His mom, Chriselle, was worried. Munchkin needed to go to the vet. But the vet was an hour away. Because of the pandemic, the country was on strict lockdown. And driving that far was against the rules. But Chriselle knew that this time, she had to break the rules. She put Munchkin in the car and headed straight to the vet. When they were stopped at a checkpoint, Chriselle was worried. What if they were told to go home? Munchkin needed help now. But the people at the checkpoint saw that Munchkin needed help. And they were let through. As soon as they arrived, the vet put a mask on Munchkin that gave him oxygen and helped him breathe. After examining him and cleaning him up, the vet realized he had pneumonia. So he gave Munchkin more oxygen. He needed to keep using it until his lungs healed. The vet gave Chriselle a machine to bring home so she could keep giving oxygen to Munchkin. He liked it best when she filled up a box with the steam. Chriselle always kept Munchkin next to her because she was so worried about him. Every day, she'd give him oxygen and then start work. And then one day, she saw this. He wanted to play. A little too hard. And pretty soon, Munchkin didn't need help breathing at all. 
then something pretty amazing happened. Munchkin figured out a new way to talk to Chriselle. He had different meows to let her know what he was thinking. There was, I need to use the bathroom, or, I'm hungry, or even, open the door, please. Munchkin's new meows meant he and Chriselle could really understand each other. In his own way, Munchkin makes sure to say thank you to Chriselle for taking a big risk to save his life. But Chriselle knows that love is always worth taking a risk. When he got sick, Chriselle was scared for Munchkin. But now, he's back at home, feeling healthy and feeling the love. Every time someone tried to rescue Miles, I'll get it, I'm gonna get it. He wouldn't let them get near him. Miles lives alone on the streets, and he's been living without any shelter or anyone to take care of him. He's wild. But when Megan saw a post about Miles, she knew she had to spring into action. Oh, there he is. There he is. Miles was roaming around neighborhoods in California where the temperature would sometimes reach over 100 degrees. Hi, baby, I'm here for you. And Megan knew this poor pup needed a home to keep cool in. You ready to get out of here? She wasn't sure if he would let her get close, but with a sweet treat in her hand, Miles approached Megan. Okay, we're going. Maybe this rescue would be easier than she thought. But as soon as Megan went to get more treats, Miles had backed away to a new shady spot. We're gonna get you out of here. We're gonna get you home. It's okay. Miles wasn't sure how he felt about this stranger. Come here. It's okay, baby. Cookie, cookie. There you go. But clearly he wasn't too afraid. So it was time to try this rescue for real. Megan took out her leash to give it a try. And then I'm just gonna put this on you, okay? See, it's nothing. But nothing was something to Miles. He was like, whoa, 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 let's back this puppy up. And he did not want any part of Megan's leash. Megan kept trying to use her cookies to get Miles to safety. You want more cookies? But at that point, Miles was too scared. Well, I lost the dog. He was too scared and ran away from me. This rescue had turned into a challenging game of hide and seek, and Megan was determined to keep finding Miles. I found you. He put me on a little hunt. But Miles wouldn't stay put. Every time Megan found him, he'd leave and show up someplace else. Megan had been trying to rescue him for seven hours, which is when she noticed she was almost out of special treats. And as the sun was starting to set, Megan knew she wouldn't be rescuing Miles today. This rescue was just too hard for one person. A few days later, Megan found Miles in a parking lot. Not a safe place for a dog. But she was in luck because right nearby was a dog park. This time, Megan came with more help. Hi there, hi there big boy. And together, they made a plan to save Miles. With the help of some treats, they slowly led Miles into the dog park. Success! But then came the tricky part, getting Miles on the leash. Her friend Courtney was determined to rescue Miles. Slowly, he approached Miles, leash in hand. And with a little encouragement from Megan, Do it, do it. Do it. Oh my god, that's not it. <gasps> yay, 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 yay. <gasps> yay, 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 yay! They did it! Miles was finally on a leash. <laughs> I can cry. I literally am crying. He said he would do it. <laughs> he said he could do it. Miles still wasn't sure about his rescuers, but Megan made sure he knew he was in the best hands. Good boy. Be just fine. And while he was in the car on the way to his new life, 
Miles looked back to say goodbye to his days of wildly roaming the streets. Now it was time for Miles to finally be a real dog. And once Miles got the rest he needed, his foster family came along to teach him how to be a house dog. Now, Miles is walking on leash, playing with his fellow pups, and always finding time for a snuggle. Sometimes it's hard to let others help us when we think we don't need it. But when we open our paws up to some love, care, and yummy cookies, life can get a whole lot sweeter. What are these pups doing out here in the desert? What's up, guys? Not much lives in the desert. Usually it's very empty with little to eat or drink. So when Esteban the dog rescuer found out about a pack of stray dogs who were all alone in the California desert, he knew he had to get in his truck and check it out. Morning, guys. Let's see if they come up. The dogs were so nervous. They probably hadn't been around people in a long time. They didn't want to get anywhere close to him. Esteban counted 12 desert dogs. What were they doing out here? Esteban knew these pups didn't belong in the blistering heat. It was so hot out there, and there was nothing for them to eat. But in order to rescue them, Esteban had to first find a way to get these dogs to trust him. And what's the easiest way to get a dog to trust you? Food. Go in here, guys. Almost every one of them got closer to him. But it wasn't gonna be that easy. Cause as soon as they finished eating, they ran away back into the desert. Esteban was determined to rescue these dogs, but it was gonna take some time. So he started coming back day after day after day. What's up, mamas? Where's your buddy? As Esteban went back and forth to visit these stray desert dogs, he noticed one pup was more curious than the others, Persephone. Oh and each day she would get closer and closer to Esteban. So they just came all the way out, way farther than they have ever come before. What's up, guys? You ready for some fooders? You ready for some fooders? You ready for some fooders? Esteban soon figured out that Persephone was the leader of the pack, and she always made sure to let the others know to follow Esteban. She was like, we have a delivery. They're following me. After months of patience and hard work, Esteban was able to get Persephone to eat out of his hand. But every time he tried to pet her, she would step away. It was like Persephone knew she wanted someone to pet her. Every dog does. But she still wasn't sure if she could trust him. She doesn't quite let me pet her yet, but that's OK. Esteban kept visiting the desert, and each time, his relationship with Persephone got stronger and stronger. That's a good girl. You almost want to let me pet you, huh? And then, it finally happened. Oh, I'm petting her. Oh my, oh my, this is amazing. I don't want to cry. Suddenly, Persephone couldn't get enough pets. She was loving it. After seven months of desert visits, Esteban had officially gained Persephone's trust. You guys have no idea. I seriously have tears in my eyes right now because her letting me pet her was amazing. And once he gained the leader of the pack's trust, the others came running. Next, it was time to get them out of the desert and into a proper home. But this rescue was still gonna be difficult. Just because the dogs liked Esteban didn't mean they were just gonna up and leave so easily. And these pups were a pack. They were gonna make sure no one got left behind. So Esteban had to think of a plan to safely rescue the desert dogs. He decided to construct a large box out of leftover fencing and place a big bowl of food inside. Then when the dogs came for the food, he could shut the door. I'm hopeful if that I put the food in there and walk away and they'll go eat. Fingers crossed. Esteban watched from afar as the desert dogs slowly entered the crate. And to his surprise, it worked! Esteban loaded up his truck with Persephone and the rest of the desert dogs and took the biggest sigh of relief. 
they were finally safe. Now it was time to find these pups a home away from the sweltering desert heat, preferably somewhere much, much cooler. But Esteban knew exactly where Persephone was going. Back to his comfy, cozy home. After all those visits, these two had a bond that couldn't be broken. Now she's a regular little lap dog who loves keeping cool indoors. As for Esteban, he's ready for his next rescue, and he won't stop until every stray dog has a cozy, loving home of their own. Which lovable's friend are you about to meet? Let's spin the wheel to find out. It's Connie! Let's hear Connie's story right now. Connie wanted to climb like the bigger koalas, but she was still too little. She fell from a tree and hurt her arm. But her rescuer is helping Connie get a little better every day so she can go back to the wild. Connie loves her rescuer so much for believing in her. It's not going to be easy to leave the rescue center, but she can't wait to climb again. This little one is a wild koala, but he's not where a wild koala should be. Koalas live in eucalyptus trees in the forests of Australia. But wildfires took away this koala's home, and now he has nowhere to go. And he isn't feeling well at all. So when he saw two campers coming closer, he walked right up to them. It must have been scary to come close to people he didn't know. But this was a very brave koala. Right away, the two could see he needed help. Why else would he have come so close? They decided to become his rescuers. The new rescuers wanted to find him some food to eat and eventually bring him to an animal hospital. That meant they'd need to put the koala into their car. They picked him up as gently as they could. He didn't seem to love it, but he was too tired to complain. With the koala in the back seat, they drove out of the burned forest stopping at the first green tree for a koala snack. He must have been so hungry because he spent the rest of the ride eating. The rescuers knew they had to get the koala to a vet who could help him. But when they arrived at the hospital, it was closed. They weren't sure what to do. So they decided to bring him to their campsite and come back the next day. But would the koala stay with them the whole night? He was a wild koala after all. They brought the koala to a little tree right next to their campsite. They gave him some leaves to eat and made a promise to see him in the morning. When they came back to the tree the next day, the koala had climbed down. He still seemed like he wasn't feeling well, but he was maybe a little hopeful too, because his rescuers were back. And this time, they were going to find a vet no matter what. They placed him back in their car and drove him right to the animal hospital. He seemed like he knew he was finally going to be safe. When they got to the animal hospital, it was open. Everybody was so happy. They said goodbye to their new friend and gave him to the veterinarians. These two campers probably didn't start their day thinking they'd become animal rescuers. But sometimes an animal will walk right up to you 
and ask you to be their hero. When rescuers first spotted this dog, they couldn't believe their eyes. That's because she's not a wild dog. She probably had a home with people once. Now, this mountain's her home. And she had just become a new mama and was so worried about her babies. She needed to get them someplace safe. The rescuers wanted to help, but every time they got close, she'd dash further away. She was wondering, who are you people? To save her babies, the rescuers would have to convince her they could be trusted. They spent a whole day trying to follow her, but couldn't keep up. And soon, they couldn't see her at all anymore. They searched and searched, but couldn't find any signs of the dogs. They weren't sure what to do next, until they heard the tiniest little cry. The rescuers followed the small sound. It grew louder and louder and led them right to what they'd been searching for. The little puppies were underground, away from the sun, with their mama by their side. The mama wasn't sure what to do. She needed to get her family down the side of the mountain. But could she really trust these people? The rescuers picked up the puppies as gently as they could. And once babies were comfy with the rescuers, Mama was comfy with the rescuers. That was all it took. Once she saw how gentle they were with her babies, it wasn't hard to convince Mama to come out too. But the rescue wasn't over yet. Now, they had to move everybody to safety. They held the puppies tightly, and Mama too, and carefully made their way off the craggy mountain straight to a new home. Safely in the car, Mama couldn't stop smiling. She was so happy to be off the dangerous rocks and with the nicest heroes who'd take care of her family. So surprise, five boys and three girls. They are just adorable. All of them like little fluffy teddy bears. I can't stop cuddling them. Just incredible, absolute survivors, all of them. The pup family will stay at a shelter until the rescuers can find new homes for them where the puppies cuddle and play. It was a long journey, but the whole family is safe and happy. It just took a bit of courage and a whole lot of trust. Look out, P the teeny horse is coming through. P might be the tiniest horse in the whole world. I mean, we haven't checked every single horse to make sure he's the absolute tiniest, but come on, look at him. He's the size of his little Frenchy brother. He can fit in a lap. P loves being small. How many horses can get picked up and snuggled by their dad? And P loves his dad, like so very much. But P didn't always love being little because P was actually born too small. His legs hadn't grown straight and neither had his jaw, which made it tough to eat. He felt so uncomfortable. P wasn't sure he'd ever be happy. That is until his new mom, Faith, adopted him. She scooped him up, brought him home, and promised P she would help him feel better no matter how long it took. P was so small, he could sleep in bed with her. That first night, all cozed up, P slept and dreamt of floating on a cloud. The next day, P and Faith got to work helping P grow. That meant food, soft food, since his jaw still hurt. 
Whoa, slow down, P. Actually, you know what? Go wild. You deserve it. With a full belly, P finally had some energy. He felt a little better, but his legs were still wobbly. He tried to practice walking with his new doggy siblings, but this was gonna take some extra care. So his mom got him shoes. But not like horseshoes, big shoes. I mean, they're technically horseshoes because P is a horse, but anyway, the shoes helped P walk better than he ever had before. He could trot all around the house, no problem at all. Look at him go. Finally, P felt good. Good enough to grow. Look how big. Okay, yes, he's still very small. P will always be small. But now he's small and happy. His jaw doesn't hurt anymore, and he can run anywhere he wants to go. Just clip plopping all over the place. P spends all day long playing with his doggy siblings. Dinner, everybody. He actually might believe he is a dog. He can't get enough of them. But his absolute favorite part of each day, when dad gets home from work. Did I mention that P loves his dad? He follows him everywhere. Look at them go. They're two peas in a pod. But his least favorite part of the day, when dad leaves for work. I have to go to work. P, you can't go to work with him. You go back right now. Uh-oh, P's upset. P. Don't be naughty. He'll be home soon. There you go. Just you and your dad. He didn't always like being little. But now, he loves it. All thanks to his big family, who showed him that love comes in all shapes and sizes. Isn't that right, P? This is definitely the worst hair day so far this year. This baby eater just fell from a tree. He's too little to be on his own. If they leave the tree, then they're just exposing themselves to all the danger on the ground. That's why these animal rescuers are looking for his mom. And they won't give up until they find her. Baby ant eaters usually ride on their mom's back. But anteater moms have to leave their babies behind when they go look for food. The rescuers think the baby fell from a tree while his mom was away. That's the sound an anteater makes. Kind of odd. It kind of sounds like air being blown through a straw. That makes sense, because an anteater's mouth looks like a straw. The rescuers want to find his mom right away. But they have to make sure the baby anteater isn't hurt. Who knows how far he fell from that tree? I've never fallen out of a tree. All I've fallen down was, a, was falling off a seven foot high monkey bar. It hurt a lot. I had to use my dog's, my dog's back massager. The rescuers decide to check his heart and his lungs and they make sure he didn't break any bones. Looks like the baby's gonna be okay. But he's hungry, and he still needs his mom. Luckily, one of the rescuers spots a big anteater outside in the same tree the baby fell from. Could she be his mom? The rescuers aren't sure. They decide to check. At first, the big anteater is afraid and doesn't want to come any closer. But when the baby starts crying, she hears him. He's her baby. They have to be very, very patient. Her baby
baby calls out to her. And then he starts climbing to her. Come on, Ant Eater, I believe in you. I know you have the strength to do this. He made it. The mom and baby Ant Eater are back together. All thanks to these rescuers. It takes hard work and patience to be an animal rescuer. But it is worth it because you get to feel all the happiness and joy that your animal friend is feeling. It's like a family reunion. It just makes you feel good. Remember, if you see an animal in trouble, don't try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. My mom helps me with the dogs I rescue. Aw, hi baby foxes. When we first found you, you were so nervous. You were still very small and the world seemed so big. You didn't have a mama fox to take care of you, so it was up to us to keep you safe. The only problem, you were really shy around us. We were gonna have to work extra hard to get you to trust us. Until then, we had plenty of things to do to help you get ready to be wild foxes again. Like cleaning up your dirty fur. Since you didn't have a mama fox to keep you clean, we had to give you a bath in the tub. Aww, you're a little fox Rito. After your baths, we gave you time to settle in. You three did a whole lot of cuddling and didn't leave the safety of your crate even when we had food for you. After a few days, you were getting used to our house. Get him! Get him! Whoa! <laughs> Are you dizzy now? That was when your mischievous sides came out. Who tore my bags of shavings apart? <laughs> Pretty soon, you weren't nervous around us at all. You realized we were just here to help. So instead of hiding from us, you started following us everywhere. Especially when we had food for you. Supper time! <laughs> you found our lap particularly cozy. Looks like you were having some sweet dreams. <laughs> time flew by and you were growing. Soon enough, you were ready to move into your outdoor enclosure. You were a bit nervous at first, but soon you realized this would be a great new home. And you were so excited. The more time you spent outside, the more your fox instincts kicked in. You started hiding from us again. Even food couldn't get you to come near us. But this was a good kind of hiding. It meant that you would be afraid of people when you went back out in the wild. Your hiding skills would keep you safe as adult foxes. We would miss having you on our lap, but we knew this was a really great sign. It meant you were almost ready to be on your own. It was time to open the doors to your enclosure. But don't worry, we weren't going to let you go without some help. We did what's called a soft release. That meant you got to go out into the wilderness to practice being wild foxes but the enclosure doors would stay open so you could come home if you needed a break. We left food and water out for you for a few weeks in case you needed help while you learned how to hunt for yourself. But it didn't take long for you to realize you didn't need our help anymore. You were big, strong foxes and you knew how to take care of yourselves. We can't believe how small and scared you were when we first found you. With some love and care, you three little foxes turned into three big ones in the blink of an eye. We're so proud of you foxes living all on your own. But you can always stop by our yard to say hello whenever you miss us. In this house, one cute little kitten named Pickle is boss.
But he wasn't always the boss. Before Pickle, Coda lived a nice, quiet life at home. She was a really happy dog. And then one day, she was in an accident, and everything changed. Her legs were hurt, and she had to learn how to walk again. Her mom, Brooke, was worried. Coda seemed so sad. Every day she practiced walking, but she didn't want to eat or play. It took a lot of work, but soon Coda could walk and run almost like she used to. But she still didn't look happy. Nothing seemed to cheer her up. Would Coda be sad forever? Brooke had an idea. They went to Coda's favorite places together. Maybe that would cheer her up. Coda, what, what are you doing? But Coda still seemed sad. Then one day, Brooke saw a picture of a sweet little cat who needed a home. She wondered if he could help cheer Coda up. What is it? But they were about to find out that Pickle was a troublemaker. Oh my God. The only way the house was safe from this menace was when he was wrapped up like a kitten burrito. But even that couldn't stop him for long. Coda didn't know what to do with him. And then one day, Brooke found Coda outside by herself. She didn't understand. How did she get out? Brooke kept finding her again and again. What was going on? But then she spotted this. I can't believe it. Looks like this little escape artist has a new sidekick. From then on, they were so attached, it was hard to tell where one ended and the other began. Could I think you're laying on something. Now, when Pickle causes trouble, Coda joins in. And she brings Pickle to all her favorite places. Coda's happy again. And it's all because of a bow tie wearing, suitcase hiding, bed stealing best friend. That's a lot of puppies! Puppy pile! This is Kaya, and she just became a mama to a bunch of puppies. But before Kaya was on mommy duty, she was a lonely dog in a shelter who needed a rescue. No one wanted to foster her until Jessie came along and changed this pity's life. Freedom walk. What do you think? Look at this beautiful place you got to be now. When Jessie first brought Kaya home, he noticed she was a little underweight. He'd have to keep an eye on her to make sure she was eating properly. But after only a few days, Kaya started to gain some weight in her belly area. Progress. But it was happening a little too fast. Jesse thought, maybe I'm overfeeding this pup. But when he brought Kaya in for a quick checkup, it turned out Kaya was eating for more than just herself. She was pregnant with a whole litter of puppies. At first, Jesse was in shock. He'd only signed up to foster one dog. Now he was gonna have an entire puppy litter too. But Jesse was ready to help Kaya be the best mom she could be. Ooh, puppy's kicking you this morning. Kaya was getting super tired from carrying all these puppies in her belly. Most days, all she wanted to do was snooze or roll around in the grass. But she still had the energy for a little fun now and then. Dog in labor wants to play with water. 
Soon, Kaya started to do her nesting, which meant it was almost time for her puppies to arrive. Then, early one morning, the pity puppy party began. Good girl. Good mama. Kaya was doing so well with her newborn pups. And Jessie thought, she's already given birth to six, so she should only have a few more left, right? But then, more puppies were born. And then even more. She was up to 15 pups. Oh my goodness, what a litter of puppies. Jessie was shocked. For sure, this had to be it, right? But then, almost three days after the first puppy was born, number 16! It was a puppy extravaganza! Mama Kaya was finally done having puppies, and you could just imagine how tired she was. Now it was time for Jessie to help this new mom out with her enormous new family. And she was grateful, because puppies can be quite a handful. They're escaping. But Kaya loved every single one of them so much. She would lead them around the yard in her very own puppy parade and taught them all the things dogs need to know, like how to dig and how to properly play. Hello, buddies. Outside. Pretty soon, it was time for Kaya's puppies to find their forever homes. It was so hard to say goodbye. But Kaya and Jessie knew these pups would be just fine. After all, they did come from the best mama. But not only did Kaya's pups find their forever home, Kaya did too. Jessie had only ever meant to foster Kaya for a little while, but after all they had been through together, he knew he could never give her up. You never know what might happen when you foster a dog, or 16. But one thing is always for sure, lots of licks, tons of tail wags, and the chance to be a hero. Dodo Kids! Help the kittens find the subscribe button.